So, question for you, why are you here? <laughs> yes, God created you, all that, but why are you here in this building? Why do some of you believe in Jesus? Why do some of you follow Jesus? Let me read why I am here. I'm here because a poor, newly married Baptist preacher answered the knock on the trailer door. On the other side of that door was a young musician who wore shark skin suits, alligator skin boots, six diamond rings, driving a Lincoln Continental around town, trying to find the best musicians. What that young musician didn't know was that behind that door was not the best piano player in town, but a servant sent by God to share the good news of Jesus. In the following six months, that musician felt drawn to that poor preacher and kept showing up to that now familiar door. And that poor preacher prayed for him, listened to him, ate with that young musician. And through that loving service, that poor preacher had the opportunity to share the story and the good news of Jesus and to lead that young musician, Steve Marks, to a surrendered life to God. I'm here because of a 16-year-old boy inviting an 11-year-old girl and her two sisters to a Bible study. And a year later, that 12-year-old girl and her two sisters surrendered their lives to Jesus, and they go home and share with their parents how Jesus has done a miracle in their lives. And the parents, Roy Elkins, responds by saying, kids, the excitement will wear off, and you'll be just like us. It didn't wear off because I stand here as evidence of that fact. But I'm not here just because of my father and mother, but because of the countless others uh, that God put in my path who pointed me towards Jesus. We are all here because someone was brave enough to love you, bold enough and courageous enough to tell you about Jesus, and to invite you to something like this. And Jesus is wanting to use each of us to point to him. And today, we're gonna look at his words and I think be challenged. But before, let's pray. Father, we just thank you that you sought us out and that you love us and you put so many people in our path that pointed us to you. Thank you for those people who, who loved us so much to tell us about Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for sending them. And thank you for coming and just changing the entire world and changing our lives. It's amazing. And we, we forget so often where we came from. And we just need to look at you and be thankful how we are all a part of the family of God and those that are far off. You're, you've put us in the place to point to you. Man, I just ask for your spirit today. I ask that you empower us to go be witnesses. You empower us to love. Empower us to go be bold with your good news and with your faithfulness. We just really, really need you. Amen. At the end of every gospel, Jesus does commission his church, his people, to go share the good news. The good news of how God had transformed your life. The good news of what Christ has done for each person and how he is wanting to save everyone. He, he does. And there's this passage in John 17, verse 18 and 20, that has just been speaking to me the last couple of weeks. As you sent me into the world, this is Jesus speaking, as you sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. Verse 20, I do not ask for these only, but also for those who will believe in me through their words. So just really quickly, why did Jesus show up? Luke 4 says this, Jesus is preaching in the synagogues and he says this, the spirit of the Lord is upon me 
because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to the captives, the recovery of sight to the blind, to set, a, uh, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. I love this part of this story because it shows you Jesus is bad to the bone. He sits down, he rolled up the scroll, uh, he dropped the mic, and then he gave back, uh, he gave it back down and sat down. Everyone was looking at him in the synagogues, and he began to say, today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. Later on in Luke 4, he says, I must preach the good news of the kingdom of God to the other towns as well, because this is why I was sent. I was sent. I must go preach the good news. This is why I was sent. And now I send you. There's something here where Christ is wanting to send us out. He even says, I'm going to send you a sheep among wolves. Very scary stuff. But what is causing us to hit the brakes? And I really think about that. Why, why don't you share the good news? Why don't you share... Uh, and I've been thinking about this all week because there's things that just keep me back. What's making you hit the brakes? I mean, I've heard a lot of people say like, oh, my story is not powerful enough. I used to think that. I grew up in church, gave my life when I was a kid. It's just not powerful enough. If only I did drugs and slept around, then I could tell people about Jesus. It's ridiculous. But that's how we feel. Like it's, it's, it's powerless if God didn't save us from prison or something. Now there's much power we've been saved from. Some of us have said, well, I'm not qualified. Jesus qualifies us. You're never good enough. Jesus is the one that redeems you and makes you good. And quite honestly, I think a lot of times for me, it's apathy. I just don't care that much. It's like, I, I, it's hard enough to love Jesus and my kids, let alone my crazy neighbor. And Jesus so loved the world. God so loved the world. He sent his son. Jesus didn't meet my neighbor. Actually, he did, but you know what I mean. You just think, I don't have time for that. Uh, we just don't care that much. And I felt really convicted about this, really challenged. I was praying for my three daughters. I was like, God, just save them. I wasn't actually crying. But I was saying, God, save him, save him, save him. And I was just reminded of that passage in Timothy, 1 Timothy 2, where it talks about how God, delight, God desires everyone to be saved. Paul says that. And I just broke. And I said, my three daughters, yes, I want you to save them, but that's not enough. That's not enough. I started thinking about my coworkers. I started thinking about my relatives who don't know Jesus. And I began to just say, God, please, 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 more, save more, save more. Not just my three daughters, more, more. There's so many people that are far from him. And there's apathy within us, just a lack of compassion as well. Just going through a list here. Sometimes we just want to keep people happy. We don't want to rock the boat. Paul says in Galatians 1, if I was still trying to please man, I would not be a servant of Christ. Woo! <laughs> I signed up for the wrong thing. Now, now I can't, you know, it's like if I'm wanting to please man, please people, that, that's not the end goal here. Jesus scares me with these words. Luke 6, 26. Woe to you when everyone speaks well of you, for that is how they, their ancestors treated the false prophets. Woe. It's not a good word. In the Greek word, it's like it kind of means uh, an expression of grief. Woe to you when everyone speaks well of you. Like, do we want to make everyone happy? And please everyone or please one. Please Christ or, or bend over backwards to make every one, everyone else happy. I will not rock the boat. I got to keep people happy here. That terrifies me. Jesus encourages us. Right before he said that, he said this, blessed are you when people hate you, when they exclude you 
and revile you and spurn your name as evil on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy, for behold, behold, your reward is great in heaven. Man, I want to please people, but do I want to please him? Uh, and, And there is a cultural elephant. I've been thinking about this, okay? I've thought. It's scary. But there is a tension here. What does our culture teach? What are the two things you shouldn't share? Hey, come on. Ooh, you guys have it. Man, you've been taught well. Good job. We've been taught don't don't preach your gospel here. Don't share your good news here. Don't talk about politics either. And really in this postmodern world, which really means like relativism, it runs deep in our culture. This is ideas like, you speak your truth. Who am I to judge? My favorite, you do you, right? You do you. I used to say that all the time. You do you. Don't preach. Don't tell the good news. So even, it even feels wrong to share the good news. It feels wrong to share it because one of the highest values in our culture is tolerance. Accept everyone. No one's in the wrong. Everyone's right. There's no baseline of truth. Anyone can find their truth. Just be you, do you. Find your thing that works. So when we speak the gospel, it doesn't feel very PC, but Jesus was not that. Jesus says in Luke 9, if anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. Forever would save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will save it. Listen to that. Let anyone, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. Deny himself? Deny desires? Deny things you want? That is not what the culture teaches. You do you. Jesus says, no, deny yourself. Pick up your cross, follow me. That's hard news. But it sure is good because this life robs us. Keller in his book, Reaching the West, great little ebook, short read. He says, uh, this postmodern, or not, this this, uh, culture here today, we reject sacred order and we choose our own values and create our own meaning in life. Culture is seeking pleasure. Christ is calling us into something that doesn't just wave and say, hey, the cake's here, the cake's here, and you eat the cake, then you're looking at an empty plate. That's what happens at the end of that path, the path of the culture. Jesus is calling us into something much, much deeper. So there is a tension here, but, we're called to share, even with that. And that is difficult. And in some ways, the culture is winning. There's plenty of surveys, I won't get into it, but where the church member thinks it's not their job to share. Every Christian has a responsibility to share. In 1993, 89% said yes. Now only 64% say yes. So more people now believe it's the church's job to invite people and to reach people, not their own. But Jesus says your voice matters. He really does. That verse 20, as you sent me, I send you, I do not ask for these only, but also for those who believe in me through your word. I worked uh, night shift for years and I'd go eat lunch I don't know why I did this with these maintenance guys and there was like eight of them and they were just mean uh, because I would sometimes talk and we'd get in a little debates here and there uh, and I'd start telling them about Jesus and they're like you're a Christian extremist you know you're ridiculous you think God speaks and this and that and there was this one guy who just hated me He at one point said, if you bring that up again, I will punch you. And I was like, oh my gosh. Uh, He didn't punch me, but uh, he had, he was this Marine with horrible PTSD, um, all this hatred, called me all kinds of names, and just, you know, you're ignorant, you're stupid to believe that. 
I mean, what does it do? And he always talked about brotherhood and, and wanting brotherhood because, you know, when someone's going to die next to you in the military, you know, I get it. But he, he just hated the church, and he, and he threw Jesus in there too. And uh, I remember he, he quit and moved on uh, to another department, and I was leaving. This would have been six months later. And I was just thinking, man, that, that was just so disappointing where that ended up. And I was walking out the gate, and I saw this guy coming up, and I was like, oh, my gosh. And he was smiling, and he comes up to me, and um, he shakes my hand and does this weird hug, and it was very awkward. And I was like, something's going on here. And he just said, I want to say thank you, and I want to say that what we fought about (laughs) on nights, like I started going to church. I brought my kids there. I'm finding brotherhood. I'm talking about PTSD, I'm talking about my problems. And, and basically, God's just changing my life. And I just remember my heart was just moved, you know? And I just thought, what? Uh, I didn't even have faith for that. And, 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 the, and the two other guys that were on nights, I still call them, and I haven't worked with them in two years, and they still call me monthly. And it's, uh, I, I, I I ignore the calls sometimes. Uh, but when we talk, when we talk, it's great because one of them has really accepted Christ. He doesn't live with me or live around me, so we talk. But it's like I was just a step, a notch to pointing him to Jesus. And now he calls and he's like, Parker, how, and he's talking about how, he, how do we be a disciple? And he's reading, reading the Bible. And I'm like, I don't know, man. I'm trying to figure it out myself, you know? And so it's just amazing when you think the things you say don't matter. Jesus is using them. And just think how quickly this all could end. At any moment, at any moment, it could end. And are you ready? And think about those who are not ready yet. And just just looking at those guys and how far they were from God, and some of them still are, they've been robbed. They just, you can tell this world, it robs us of innocence, it robs us of peace, it robs us of joy. People are continually trying to find life, right? They're trying to find life. You think you're drinking, you're drinking, you feel good in the moment, then the next morning you feel robbed, you feel tired, you feel awful. I try to find it in a relationship and that doesn't fulfill. You, you try to find a career. We try to find life in every other avenue, and it ends in emptiness. And I just think this is why it's so important for us to not just have a mindset that it could end in any moment and that these people could be eternally separated from them, but that we need empowerment to go love them, empowerment to go serve them. And I really do think, I was talking to my grandpa Friday, and I was talking to him, and he was talking about the 60s and 70s, and uh, I guess they were fun times. But they, <laughs> they uh, the movie The Spirit was happening, it's called The Jesus Movement, a lot of people gave their lives to Jesus. Uh, and he was just talking about how the, the spirit was poured out in such a way that not just one or two people were sharing, everybody was just talking about Jesus. Kids would be in the hallway praying before tests and, and just sharing their face and praying for everybody. And you just go, what? That's weird. And how he was just really describing, we need that again. We need the spirit. And I would say this is what is so true, where when we're talking about loving people, having that empathy, having that compassion, caring, having the boldness, what gets us there, what helps us? And out of Luke 24, it is the Holy Spirit, guys. It really is. Jesus says this, and behold, I am sending the promise of my Father upon you, but stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high, And then in Acts 1.8, he says, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you'll go be my witnesses in all the earth. This is important. And I remember another story. I remember being filled with the Holy Spirit 
and just my life being transformed. And I remember being 18 in Italy. This was a crazy moment. A lot of you have heard it, and I will never do it again. Uh, the Holy Spirit filled me. We were in Rome, Italy at the Colosseum. Keith Swing was there, my backup guy, because I was like, if they attack me, punch them. Uh, and I saw this huge hill, and God said, share the gospel. And there was like hundreds of people. I was like, what? I went and changed my pants, and then I got up on the hill. No, I, I got up there and was terrified. But, and I... I stood up there for I don't even know how long. And I just, all of a sudden, you know, I just felt the boldness. I, I don't know what to say other than I felt the boldness to share. And I did this. I wasn't that brave because I put my hands over my eyes like this. And I was like, kind of like this. It was, it was awful. Uh, and I go, hey, everybody, I have good news. I said, everybody listen, I have good news. And some lady's like, what is it? I was like, oh my gosh, they are listening. Uh, and I, I just, I just tell them the plain Jane gospel. You know, Jesus loves you. He came, died for your sins. That whoever turns and believes in Him could have life, life abundantly. If anyone wants to enter into that life, come up here. Great, right? After that moment, I uh, something came over me, and I just ran, <laughs> and I ran and hid behind this bush, and I was like shaking. And I can I always remember what Keith Swing comes up because they're watching and he comes over and he's like, what are you doing? And I'm like, <laughs> but in that moment, something happened to me. It just, I was ashamed. I was ashamed of the gospel. And I just remember feeling the conviction of the spirit. Like I was, I did a God thing and then I was ashamed of it. I was like, I gotta hide. That was not of me. That wasn't Parker. That was something else. I didn't like it. And I was hiding behind this bush, just going, oh man, I do not like that I shared that, that I screamed it out. Everybody knows what I believe. And I just felt foolish. I felt stupid and I, I felt ashamed. But in that moment, I remember God speaking. And I remember him telling me how he loved me and he's not ashamed of me. And he wants to use me to share that good news more. And breakthrough happened. And I just want to encourage each of you, one step in the right direction can lead to breakthrough. One step. Not just in your breakthrough, but maybe for someone else's. We need the Holy Spirit's empowerment. He might call us to do crazy things. Hopefully not in Rome, Italy again. But if he does, oh, help me, Jesus. He could call you to do crazy things. He probably will. He might call you to love your wife more. That's right. He might call you to love your kids. He might call you to share your story of God's faithfulness in your life. And he, he will call you to people you can't stand. I just think this is hilarious. Every person God puts in front of me, I hardly can like. And then God's like, I want, you to, I want you to tell him the good news. I'm like, this guy's ridiculous. So if you're conservative, yeah, hey, politics, right? If you're conservative, you know who God's gonna call you to reach? Some tree hogging, electric car driving, liberal. Liberal, you know who God's gonna call you to do? Some gun-toting, anti-mask wearing, conservative. Because God don't care. God wants to reach everybody. Amen. He wants to reach everyone. And that's what matters. He died and paid the price for everyone. He says, I long all to come to the truth and the knowledge of God. That is the truth. And he says, for if you love those who love you, what reward do you have? Do not even the tax collectors do the same? If you greet only your brother, what more are you doing than others? We're called to lay our life down. We're called to lay our life down. And so many people, so many people see Jesus as just this restrictive, compromising, 
giving up what I want to do, a set of chains, a set of rules, until they see his work in you. And when they see the life you have, the joy you have, the peace you have, the delight you have, even when everything's falling apart, when they see that, and you say, you have to say, where that joy comes from. Because if you don't tell them where it comes from, they're just gonna say, wow, they have great discipline or something. No, you point and say, Jesus is where I find that joy. Jesus is where I find that delight. Jesus is the one. He is. When you have that in you, you have to share it because there are too many people that have nothing and are broken and are far from him. And all they need to see is that the joy and the freedom and the life that Jesus has, this life is robbing them. But Christ wants to set them free and give them life. And we have those words. And we have those stories. And you might have a boring story, but I bet you, you got a great story of God's faithfulness at one point in your life. And that's what you share. It's what you share. Because one day, one day, you'll be that person. Like my parents, you'll be that person on the other side of the door where this person's standing in front of you and you're just wondering, who is this? But God's put you in their life to pray for them, to listen to them to eat and share life with them, to serve them sacrificially, and to share your story of God's faithfulness. For some of you, you will have the opportunity to invite people to Bible studies, to community groups, into your home, into the, your life, to church, to Friday night Christmas. You'll have that opportunity. Never, never, underestimate one act of obedience. And I'm so challenged. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. And in that verse we read in John, Jesus said, I'm sending them. You sent me, but I'm sending them. Jesus is essentially saying like, I so love the world that I not only laid my life down for them, I'm also sending them to reach people. Jesus has chosen you and your voice, and your story, and your testimonies to go reach those people far from him. And today, some of you are the ones who have been invited, and you are far from God, and you thought you were the master of your fate, and then you're here, and you're like, oh my goodness, I've been ambushed, God's here. And it's true. And I believe Jesus would say this to you. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and eat with him and he with me. Jesus has been in pursuit of all of us our entire lives. Wow. Today, we need the spirit empowerment to love like this and to care. Ben, you can come up. While they come up, uh, I just, any of you, if this is spoken to you, and you need to be filled with the power of God to go love people hard to love. Respond and get prayer. We need what my grandpa Roy is saying. We just need everyone, every single one in this room to just be drenched with the Holy Spirit. So we're like, I cannot tell about it. And we just go out like crazy. Like that would be amazing. Like if we had to do this talk again in like a month or two and I said, guys, you have to settle down and you can't just go yell at people and just love people so much. Like what if we had to put the brakes on for loving too hard, loving too much, sharing too much? That would be crazy. That would be crazy. But today let's, let's ask God to do that in us 
so that we can go out. So let's pray. Father, I'm just, I am just thankful. I'm thankful for your grace. And just as it was pouring out this morning, I was thinking, man, I want you to pour out your grace on my heart. I want you to pour out your love on my heart so that I can go love and share the grace. God, just just bless us with your presence. Pour out your spirit and empower us to go love like you loved. God, you sent me, so I am sending them so that through their words, they'll believe like you're sending us. And I'm just thankful. So, so thankful. Amen. Let's stand together. As we worship in song this morning, we do just want to encourage you to respond to what we've heard. And um, if you would like to do that by getting prayer, we will have people up here to pray with you. We would love for you to come forward. We also have... Uh, communion on the tables here on either side and you are welcome to do that just as you feel led this morning at any time during worship this morning and if you do feel like the Lord has placed something on your heart that would be for everyone we want you to share that with the guys just come forward and share that and we'll see about fitting that in this morning thank you Jesus Spirit, Lord Jesus, Holy Spirit, come. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Bless the Lord of my soul, oh, my soul, worship his holy name.
on that day when my strength is failing the end draws near and my time has come still my soul will sing your praise I'm And then forever more Bless the Lord Bless the Lord, oh my soul Oh my soul Worship His holy name
be my confession My wealth is in the cross My wealth is in the cross There's nothing more I want Than just to know His love my heart is set on Christ And I will count all else as loss The greatest of my crowns Mean nothing to me now For I count it up the cost And all my wealth is in the cross There's nothing more I want Than just to know Him I just want to encourage you guys, you know, this, that message you heard, I mean, I don't know if you, I've heard a lot of messages in my life, and that was among the best, among the most powerful, I think, that I've ever heard. And, I mean, this morning, I know there are hearts in here that are stirred uh, for that word. There are hearts in here that are stirred for God filling you with His Spirit, for God putting in this, this heart. I mean, even just, it's, I mean, to me, it's obvious. If you, it wasn't obvious to you. I've known, again, I've known Parker for a long, long time, since he was 16, you know, and and just this spirit in him to share the gospel, this spirit in him, this, this hunger, this love, this, the, the tears as he thinks of people who don't know Jesus. And here's the truth, is that God wants that heart for you. Because guess whose heart? That's the heart of Jesus. And I just feel this morning, if you felt your heart was stirred, I just want to, again, invite you to come forward. We'll have somebody come up and pray for you. You know, maybe you're just, you lack confidence. Maybe you're just like, you know what, I need to be reminded of how God loves me. It could be anything. I just want to encourage you, come forward, get prayer. Don't miss this opportunity. God moves powerfully as we pray for one another. This is so, it's, it's just one of, the, one of the ways I've just seen people's lives change, people's, you know, uh, life just blessed powerfully is when they respond, they get prayer, and God speaks to them. And so I just want to encourage you this morning. You know, we've got a few more worship songs, and, and uh, you know, it's just there's time, this is an opportunity for God to, to impact you in a powerful way this morning. So come forward if you want prayer, and uh, come get blessed. We 
could ever see. We could ever breathe. We live for you, mm, Jesus. Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one that could ever say. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe, we live for you. We live for you. Holy, there is no one like you. There is none beside you. Open. Fill me with your heart.
Lord and lead me in your love to those around me. Yes, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. our voice along heaven and earth alive we've seen we've seen your faithful hand your mercy
highest praises. here, but before uh, I pray and close us, Devin wanted to just share a story, a testimony, just of God's faithfulness in our life. So, Devin, you want to just come up and... Thank you. I'm not much of a public speaker, so bear with me. Um, but about five and a half months ago, I started, I've kind of been on a fitness journey for a little while, and I started this extreme prep to get ready for a competition that I have coming up on Saturday. And so throughout this prep, you're basically having to stick to the same six meals every day. I haven't cheated the diet one time. And uh, to explain the, the amount of, you know, it's so tough to, to not even just say, hey, I would have, you know, I want to have a coffee with sugar in it or, or I'd like to have Burger King today. You can't just do that. So uh, in this journey, you know, about two weeks in, I was in a, a major accident with the semi and, and and that was one time that I really felt like, hey, I really would like to cave right now. And, and then again, a couple, you know, about a month later, I got into a, a position where I had the opportunity to, you know, leave a place that I wasn't particularly um, comfortable with in a career and I wanted to move forward. And I prayed on it. And again, you know, the toughness and all of that, I just wanted to binge and I wanted to eat and do all these different things. And, and then, uh, you know, I, I prayed on it and I found that, I, I'm in a really great position now um, where I'm at in my place of work and I love you know what this journey has done and just about a week ago so my dad's been battling cancer for about the last four years or so and um, Friday started my peak week what we call peak week and that's where you really have to hone in you're on like zero carbs you're really just trying to see what you can pull off before your competition and on Friday uh, we were told that my dad um, 
you know, he had what's called a JC virus. And so this virus is common among other people and it's, uh, you know, but with his cancer and not having an immune system or to help out with that, um, it's about a 90% chance that he could pass away um, by next week. So the doctor called us yesterday and said, hey, um, he has a possibility of making this, but we want you, we want you to stay hopeful, but we need to get this infusion from a different state. So um, we, I said, yes, of course, go ahead with the infusion. Um, and yesterday, you know, in the middle of all, this whole journey, my peak week is supposed to be the, t the toughest time um, that I'm in right now with this whole fitness kick. And, and then I get, you know, we get news of my dad and his cancer and that he could possibly pass away within just a week. And um, in all of this, for some reason, I just kept thinking, why? Am I at peace? Why I shouldn't feel at peace and safe and secure. Uh, but the only answer I have is God, because in my faith, God has given me peace during this time where I'm supposed to be probably, you know, freaking out. And but I know whatever happens, you know, He is in God's hands, and God brings us peace through that. And so um, I just encourage you to, you know, look for comfort in your heart in those times because. Again, I just can't explain. I, I'm not. I'm not stressed. Um, I'm comfortable, and I'm at peace. That God is in control. Yeah, Lord, we do just pray, uh, and God, we we just we're so thankful for your love, God. I'm thankful that you are a God who, God, you're in control and you're good. And God, you sent your Son Jesus to overcome death, to overcome sin, to overcome the brokenness in this world. And Lord, you give life and you give it abundantly. You give it freely by your grace and mercy. And Lord, we're just so thankful. And I just pray this morning we would all just receive more <clears throat> of your Holy Spirit, more of you, Jesus. Bless us. <clears throat> Continue to be just moving among us. God, this doesn't end here. God, you're doing powerful work this morning, and I just pray this week, bless and continue to do powerful work in the hearts and the people here. God, that it would change coworkers' lives, neighbors' lives, this people in this city and in this community, Lord. We just pray all these things in your name. Amen. Guys, thanks so much for being here. We'll see you next week.